Hello, this is part three of our lecture on abnormal vaginal discharge. We will start with the vulvovaginal candidiasis, which is the fungal infection affecting vulva and vagina. Uh, the main characteristic feature is itching. Okay, so women um, find it very difficult to manage the situation. If it is um, a severe infection, they may not be able to sleep even. Okay, it may cause even skin irritation um, but the characteristic feature when we examine on speculum examination, it's a light, whitish curd-like, yogurt-like discharge. It does not cause any smell, unlike bacterial vaginosis. Okay, so no smell, but a lot of itching. Always think about vulvovaginal candidiasis. It is particularly associated with uncontrolled diabetes or women who may be immunocompromised or even pregnancy because pregnancy is uh, in in pregnancy usually the immune system is um, uh, compromised uh, reduced actually immunity is reduced. So how do we do it? Just take a sample um, on a swab while performing a speculum examination and send it to the laboratory. And uh, usually the laboratory. Uh, for culture sensitivity, the test usually takes a few days. It does not come back the next day, okay? But we can provisionally start treatment. Uh, so what is the treatment? It's, of course, antifungals, right? Antifungals, we can give either uh, vaginal preparations, which may be either as creams or pessaries, which are the vaginal tablets, or they can be even oral, okay? But we have to make sure that if a patient is pregnant we should not give oral antifungals okay in pregnancy the only option is giving vaginal either tablets or vaginal creams okay uh, and then for uh, symptomatic relief um, especially if there is skin irritation we can just give them some um, topical aqueous cream or like uh, even um, uh, topical application of antifungal cream like outside right apart from inside okay so yes we can give intravaginal but like we can also give them topical preparation for skin okay how does it look like see so they, they, this is the whitish discharge it does not cause any smell Okay, and in this one you can say, so this is the os, right? This is the cervical os, so the cervix looks fine. It's only a lot of vaginal discharge, okay? But having said that, there may be sometimes, there's some, there may be sometimes mixed, like a, the same women can have bacterial vaginosis and candida at the same time. Like they can have more than one infections at the same time. Or sometimes they can have a vaginal infection and they can have cervicitis as well. Like the cervix may be inflamed, but if it is, just bacterial vaginal, uh, sorry, uh, vaginal candidiasis on its own without infection of the cervix for some other reason, the cervix will be normal. Okay. Now, the third infection is Trichomonas vaginalis. That's, uh, remember that this is vaginalis, okay, this is not vaginitis. So it's a sexually transmitted infection. And what causes it? It's caused by a uh, uh, protozoan actually okay so and it's flagellated so if it is seen under a microscope it's uh, it's it's flagellated it has a flagella and it's a protozoan and now a lot of infections uh, they they may be there but they do not cause any symptoms so almost half of the women with trichomonas vaginalis they may not have any symptoms importantly it's a sexually transmitted infection so that means all current and recent partners they need to be screened and treated okay at the same time when the patient is being treated and uh, how to do the testing and sometimes uh, yeah the characteristic feature when we see on speculum is uh, first is this strawberry cervix it's called strawberry cervix like a strawberry and it is very easy to bleed uh, usually when you touch it it bleeds very easily okay that's called bleed to touch uh, cervix okay um, bleed to touch cervix can also be in like cervical cancer even okay so uh, and um, uh, but the characteristic feature of trichomonas vaginalis is uh, strawberry cervix also trichomonas vaginalis causes yellowish or greenish kind of uh, discharge okay and um, uh, yeah, so if we send it for to the laboratory, either by uh, vaginal swab 
or even endocervical swab. Endocervical means swab from inside the cervix. Okay. So the high vaginal was like in the vagina, right? From the vaginal fornix, but endocervical is like inside the. Uh, but we can just take a vaginal swab and then send it to the laboratory. But what test do we need? It's not culture sensitivity. Okay, it's called nucleic acid amplification test. A lot of times it happens that when we do cervical screening, right? Um, then even on that, unexpectedly, sometimes it, they can detect trichomonas vaginalis because they see the cells under the microscope, right? So sometimes on... Uh, say for example if we have taken say for example a pap smear or cervical screening right or liquid based cytology on that it can be detected especially if the patient is asymptomatic okay so uh, what is the treatment the treatment is with metronidazole oral metronidazole okay and again as before when taking oral metronidazole alcohol should be avoided when taking the medicine as well as uh, for, for 48 hours after the treatment it should be at least uh, seven days okay now this is the strawberry cervix it just look it looks like a strawberry so that's why it's called strawberry cervix okay the next ones now those were mainly vaginal infections the next two infections are chlamydia and gonorrhea and they cause actually cervicitis they mean they actually affect the cervix but they can also affect the urethra okay so um first we will start with gonorrhea now what is gonorrhea gonorrhea is caused by these um, diplococci which is the neisseria gonorrhea okay and um, i hope you know that it's a notorious sexually transmitted infection so that means simultaneous treatment of current and recent sexual partners is important again almost half are asymptomatic and um at the same time, women need to be treated, uh, screened for other sexually transmitted infections. For example, if there is gonorrhea, we have to screen for chlamydia, even HIV, um, and other um, sexually transmitted infections. Okay, So um, there is risk of pelvic inflammatory disease, and we know that if a woman is having recurrent um, episodes of pelvic inflammatory disease, her risk of having tubal blockage increases whenever there is tubal blockage. There are more chances of having ectopic pregnancy and even um, infertility. Okay, So one of the causes of increasing infertility in the world is uh, because of increased risk of having sexual transmitted infections. Also, depending on the mode of sex um, we need to um, consider uh, taking swabs anal swabs and oral swabs okay uh, from the pharynx uh, depending on um, the how sex is being performed and examination may be normal sometimes there may not be any obvious um, findings and but there may be a mucopural and discharge now um, gonococcus can affect eyes as well okay so it it can cause effect eyes especially in newborn babies uh, if the mother if the baby was born vaginally and if the at the time of infection the mother's uh, mother had um, gonorrhea or even chlamydia the baby can have uh, it and the baby can have a condition called as ophthalmia neonatorum that's actually an acute emergency in in ophthalmology Okay, why? Because uh, there may be perforation of the cornea, okay, and that can lead to blindness. So if anywhere, if you see a newborn baby with sticky eyes, sticky eyes means like there is discharge, okay, discharge pus or like discharge from the eyes, uh, it needs to be treated, okay. Now, how is it diagnosed? If we are doing a speculum examination, we can take uh, swabs from the cervix uh, intracervical okay not high vaginal swab now remember that it is not the same swab stick the one which I showed you even when you are on campus it's not the same one it's a different one okay so for cervical swab they look kind of similar but they are different okay so they uh, it, it's the sample is just taken from inside the cervix not vaginal an easier way is especially for men when we have to check men for gonorrhea it's easy to get a urine sample okay 
in urine sample, please remember, see when we uh, screen for urinary tract infection, urine sample is um, midstream, right? Discard the beginning and the end, right? For infection, that's what we do, right? But for gonorrhea, it should be the first one, the first catch, the initial one, okay? And then we the test, it's nuclear, uh, nucleic acid amplification test. And if positive, then it's good to get culture sensitivity. Why? Because there is a high resistance um, for um, uh, the treatment against gonorrhea. Okay, so it's once you confirm it, we have to get culture sensitivity test. And of course, screen for other STIs. What is the treatment? It's actually th I, uh, the third generation intramuscular cephalosporin and... Uh, azithromycin okay so but if it's a pregnant woman then instead of um, uh, yeah so as azithromycin is safe actually in pregnancy uh, okay so but doxycycline is not okay so the next uh, i will discuss in the later part of the lecture